Hello, how are you today? Well, I always try to do something a little bit different each day, and today I'm going to do something quite different. I'm going to lecture you. I'm going to lecture you for a while, but uh, hopefully it's profitable um, before I get to the poem. The poem today is rather short, but I like to talk about some big issues, some things that uh, we don't always talk about in class. Things related to why we read poetry at all, why sometimes English class makes students dislike reading, even when our whole purpose is to make you like reading, why it's a struggle sometimes, why we look for meaning in things. These are big questions, and I'm going to talk to you about these things as adults. I'm going to treat you like an adult and speak to you on a level where um, I'm going to just ask you to follow along as if this were like a university lecture, okay? Because I'm getting you ready for life. So, um, let me bring you back to a debate that I had decades ago. And uh, sorry to pick out a little argument so as to portray myself as the winner of an argument. I'm not trying to make myself out to be like the hero or anything, but uh, can't help it, right? Okay, so... Um, years ago, I met someone who was uh, an avid reader. He was a uh, university student studying um, English literature. I think it would be very fair to say that at the time, he was a better reader than I was. He had read far more than I. He, he, I was just starting to really appreciate the classic books. Um, he was deep into it. Um, so I just was asking questions, talking to him about some of the books that I knew of by reputation and some of the ones I had read. And I just asked him questions such as, you know, which one do you like better? Why did you enjoy that book? And he said something to me, which I'm sorry to say is, uh, I think a rather stupid thing to say if you're a highly intelligent and educated person. Um, and he said to me, well, I don't read to enjoy. I read to understand. And uh, don't be surprised by this, by the way. You will meet many people who say things just like that. I, I have met people who say things like that. And, and it's oftentimes taken as quite normal way of thinking in the academic world, but it totally alienates me. <laughs> okay, why? Um, so my thinking of this was, think of a great book. Don Quixote is considered by many to be one of the best novels ever written. Whether you've heard of it or not, don't worry. It's a great book uh, written in Spanish um, in the 17th century. Um, so my thinking on it is, imagine you sit down and you read 800 pages or 900 or however many pages of Don Quixote there are, and you go from cover to cover and at the end... You say, I didn't enjoy this. Um, in my opinion, you didn't understand it. How could you claim to understand something like that and have gotten no direct enjoyment or appreciation from it? It's a comedy. Can you imagine um, someone today going to a stand-up comedy routine or maybe a comedy movie like Dumb and Dumber and sitting in the audience and thinking, hmm... Yes, I see. This part is funny because they have boogers on their faces. Yes, that's very logical. If you walked out of that movie and didn't laugh, you could say it was a bad movie, but you can't say that you understood it. Um, because comedy is meant to be laughed at. So a large part of the experience of great work is uh, the, the direct feelings that we get out of it. That's the kind of stuff we don't always get to talk about in English class. Um, why is that? Um, getting to the point where you can access all kinds of great works sometimes takes work, and that sometimes seems unpleasant. We have to get past the point where um, we're just struggling with the individual words and understanding what does this sentence mean. Getting to that point takes time and effort, just like being able to lift heavy weights when you already, um, you know, you can hardly lift 
you know, 15 pounds, you're not going to be able to lift 100 pounds by next week, right? It's, a, it's something that we work at, and some people don't see the point and working at it, and they don't get started. I try to help you along the way, but the fact that it is difficult along the way sometimes turns people off because they don't get that, oh, wait, I love that. I appreciated that experience, okay? The goal is to get there. Um, so let me change tack. I'm going to talk about, imagine I want to write a poem and I have a message I want to deliver because a lot of people think literature is about communication and sending messages, right? So my message is that I want to send, uh, to, to the reader, we should be kind to each other. So perhaps the best way to do this would be to write we should be kind to each other. There's my poem. Not many people like that kind of poem. Why? Well, for one thing, people will say, hey, at least make me believe it. Just saying it isn't going to work. You have to convince me. Maybe the best way to convince me is to give me an experience. Let me care about something in your writing so that when it's done, I can come away with my own feeling of, if only we were kinder, things like this wouldn't happen. If only she had been kinder. If only he had been kinder. So that's how literature kind of develops to the point where it's not just messaging, it's experience. Right? But what if we get more sophisticated? And we write something where there's some ambiguity. There's an experience, maybe there's a message, but there's some room for interpretation. There may be other possible messages in there. There may be counter messages. People who read could disagree. It gets quite complicated because it brings poetry into the realm of real life. Real life is, becomes very complicated. We don't always see a clear meaning in every situation. We can't always say, what did that mean? Oh, we can say what happened, and then two different people will come away with different readings of what it meant and how it felt to them. What if we get to the point where the art is so much about the experience that the message is no longer so important? Now we've got something very sophisticated, something very complicated, sometimes hard to talk about. English class in school tends to focus on those works that we can distill down to a message so we can have a conversation. So two or three or four or five or a whole class of people can say, oh, this is what it's about and this is my reaction to it. And that is good. It's good practice. It's a good way to understand things, but it's not a complete understanding of things. As you move forward, you're going to have a more sophisticated understanding of art and literature. It takes time to get there. And it doesn't always come down to the simple understanding of the meaning of a work. Okay. Music. For some reason, natively, from birth, we have no difficulty enjoying and appreciating music as an abstract experience. It's just normal. You talk to a lot of people about abstract art, painting, and they think, what's that? I don't understand it. I don't get the meaning of it. You give them a poem and it seems a little weird and they can't see the meaning of it and it frustrates them. And you play music, which is completely abstract. There's no picture. There's no story. It doesn't have a message necessarily. Sit down and listen to some Miles Davis jazz or Beethoven sonata with no words, just music. You can love it. Or you can hate it, but you can feel it. And nobody questions, well, what did it mean, necessarily? The difficulty, but also the power in literature, the thing that makes it so complex, literature includes novels, it includes plays, it includes poetry, is that this is art made from words. And sometimes the words get in the way. The words paint a picture for us. They give us an experience. And sometimes we get focused on the words so much that we forget the experience. Or we get so caught up in the experience that we forgot to analyze the words and see how they could have had a different meaning too. It's a very complex phenomenon. But the point is, 
What does this word mean? Is a key to understanding, but it is not complete understanding. The goal of English can only take you so far in English class to get you to the point where you can read the works, you can find the meanings, but then so much of it is on you. And then it's about finding the things that you connect to. And I can recommend things to you. And you can say, I didn't enjoy that. And you may be legitimate in your criticism. So I can't open up all literature to you. All I can do is give you the little building blocks, the tools that get you to be able to put the engine together. But then when you get in the car, you're the one who's going to have to drive it. Okay? <laughs> so that's a somewhat mature lecture, I think. Unless I'm childish, maybe I am. But a lecture to mature learners on what it means to read poetry and to try to improve our understanding. So I'm going to take a look at a poem today, and it is called Introduction to Poetry. There's a lot of irony to this, I think. This is a meta-poem. I've told a few of you before what meta-poetry is. It just means it's poetry about poetry. The subject of this poem is poetry. The poem is telling us what poetry is. The irony of it is that the message of this poem is very clear. And the message of this poem is that the message doesn't matter very much. <laughs> so you can get your mind spinning in circles thinking about this. But yes, it's just another reminder to you, beating the meaning out of a poem doesn't mean you've mastered the poem or that you've appreciated it. Okay, so I'm going to read that poem now, first from the language level of just helping you understand line by line what it means. Then I'm going to just read it, let you experience it, and walk away. And if you like, you can come back and tell me whether you think um, it's important to find the literal meaning of a work before you can enjoy it. Introduction to Poetry by Billy Collins. I asked them to take a poem and hold it up to the light like a color slide. So it seems as if he's talking from the perspective of a teacher. And them refers to students. I asked the students to just take the poem and look at it like a photographic slide where you can see the images of it. Just look at it and experience it, enjoy it. Or press an ear against its hive, like listening to a beehive to hear what's buzzing inside. I say drop a mouse into a poem and watch him probe his way out, like putting a mouse in a maze and see the way that it finds its way out. What's the literal meaning of this? Well, it's a little confusing, actually. It's a strange metaphor. But he's talking about just experiencing a poem in different ways and analyzing it. And the next part, the next stanza, or walk inside the poem's room and feel the walls for a light switch. You enter the poem confused and in the dark, struggling to find something that will enlighten you, perhaps. I want them to water ski across the surface of a poem, waving at the author's name on the shore. I just want them to experience it on the surface, perhaps. And remember who wrote it, and perhaps make an association. But all they want to do is tie the poem to a chair with a rope and torture a confession out of it. They mean, like, as you would take a prisoner and say, Tell me the truth! Tell me what you know! They begin beating it with a hose to find out what it really means. That's the struggle of the poetry teacher, is trying to give the reader the experience of the work and to recognize all of its artistic qualities before we get down to, but what's the message? Unfortunately, very oftentimes, we have to bring it down to what's the message. But the rest, the experience, is very hard for us to deliver to you as students. That's for you to find. Okay, so the experiential reading. I'm just going to read it, and then you know. I'll ask you to comment. I asked them to take a poem and hold it up to the light like a color slide, or press an ear against its hive. 
I say drop a mouse into a poem and watch him probe his way out, or walk inside the poem's room and feel the walls for a light switch. I want them to water ski across the surface of a poem, waving at the author's name on the shore. But all they want to do is tie the poem to a chair with a rope and torture a confession out of it. They begin beating it with a hose to find out what it really means. All right. Well, thank you for indulging me and listening to my long lecture. I hope that this poem has some meaning for you. Give me your reactions, and I'll speak to you again when I have yet another poem tomorrow. Good day.